And it is also our variety Sunday. Are you excited to be in God's presence today? Yes. Yes. Before we go on, can someone remind me what happened on the 1st of October this year? Yes. Nigeria marked her 60th independence anniversary. Wow. Can we all say happy independence to Nigeria? Happy independence to Nigeria. Yes. Before we go ahead, let's just pray for Nigeria. Are we ready to pray? Yes. Children at home, join us also as we pray for Nigeria. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for your presence in Nigeria. Thank you for your faithfulness over this nation. We are so grateful. Father, we pray as Nigeria marks a 60th independence anniversary. We ask, O oh God, that your peace will reign in every nation in Nigeria in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray in the name of Jesus that the government of Nigeria will be upon your shoulder in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We speak peace to every raging storm in Nigeria. We say, peace be still in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank because you. Nigeria will become a better place for every one of us to live in. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Like I said, today is our Variety Sunday. And this is the Sunday we are going to be revising all the topics we did in the month of September and all the Bible stories we learned. Are we ready? Yes. After that, we are going to be writing a short quiz. Are we excited about the quiz? Yes. And I'm sure some of you got some gifts from submitting your questions from the last quizzes we did. How many of us got gifts? Yes, I think you should say thank you, Children's Church. Thank, thank you, you, Children's Church. Church. Very good. Now, before we go, can we, can somebody tell me the theme for the month of September? We, remember, we are revising the topics and the Bible stories in September. So, what was the theme for the month of September? I think everybody should be able to say, let's all echo it. Godliness is profitable unto all things. Correct. I want somebody to explain what godliness is. What is godliness? Yes. Godliness means to act like God, think like God, and to be, be like, like God. God. Yes. Godliness means to be like God. Somebody say, be like God. Be, be like, like God. God. Speak like God. Speak like God. And act like God. And act like, like God. God. Yes. Also, godliness means to obey God's instructions and say no to evil. Say no to evil. Yes. And we were taught that living godly is an op is not an option, but it is a requirement for every child of God. God demands godliness, living godly, living right, saying no to sin, from both young and old. And our running topic in the month of September was living godly in an ungodly world. Can somebody echo it so that everybody can hear? Want to go? Living godly in an ungodly world. Yes, and our first focus was why godliness matters. And the Bible story was about Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1 from verse 1 to 14. Timothy was a very a young man who dared to be different. He lived and he served God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Apostle Paul was writing a letter to him and was warning him never to be ashamed of who he was. He was a child of God. He said, be bold, be proud of who you are and hold fast to the words and the teachings of Jesus. He also reminded him that we, you, we as children of God, we are light in this world. Everywhere we go, we should shine the light of Jesus. You know, children, there are so many sinful things going on in the world right now. But I want to encourage you, as children of God, to be different, like Timothy. Okay? And Apostle Paul also told Timothy, he said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but has given us a spirit of what? 
power of love and sound mind. And that reminds me of our special song. Can we all sing it together? Yeah. One, two, sing. God has not given us the spirit of fear. We need to sing louder. God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has given unto us what's the power. The spirit of power. The spirit of love and the sound mind. Yes. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But we have the spirit of power of love and of sound mind. So children, can you give me some reasons why living godly in an ungodly world is important? Why is it important for us to live godly in an ungodly world? Yes, who's going to come first? Godliness attracts favor with God. I can't hear you. Godliness attracts favor with God. Very good. A sound clap. Yes, who again? Godliness makes you enjoy friendship with God. Yes, godliness makes you enjoy friendship with God. Who wants to be a friend of God? Yes, I want to be a friend of God because there's a you have a lot of things to enjoy when you are a friend of God. Yes, a sound clap for her. Another lesson. You will exhibit divine wisdom and sound mind. Yes, remember that song. You will have sound mind and wisdom. A sound clap. Who else wants to tell us a lesson? You will enjoy eternity with God. Oh. That is the ultimate. May the Lord give us the grace to live a godly life in this changing world in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, very good. And on the second Sunday, our Bible story was taken from Jeremiah chapter 35 from verse 1 to 19. And the story was about the Rechabites. The Rechabites. Yes. Go to Jeremiah. Go and invite the sons of Rechab. Tell them to come into the temple where nobody will see them and give them wine to drink. Jeremiah did that. But when the wine was presented before Jerichabites, they said, no, sir, we don't do this. We don't take wine. Our father instructed us that we shouldn't take wine and we are going to obey our father. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the shock on prophet Jeremiah's face? He was so shocked that... So there are still this kind of children in this changing world from this Bible story, what can you tell us? What lessons can you bring up from this Bible story? From the story of the children of Rekha. They refused and God was so proud of them. Do you have any lessons from them? Yes. Learn to say no to sin no matter the pressure. Say no to sin no matter the pressure. You know, I usually say something. No matter how many people are doing wrong things, it doesn't make it right. right. It doesn't make it right. It's there to stand out. A sound clap for her. Yes, any other lesson from the story of the sons of Rekha? Yes. I should be determined to obey my parents and God. Yes. Whether your parents are there or not, determined to obey them and stand out. A sound clap. Yes. Any other lesson? Yes. I learned also that we should learn to say no to sin no matter the pressure. Friends will tell you, if you don't do it, you will not be your friend again. You just leave this group. We can't afford to do, we can't afford to be friends with you again if you don't do this. Tell them bye bye. Can you say bye bye to say? Bye bye. I want you to say it loud now. Say, no matter the pressure, no matter the pressure, I will say no to sin. I will say no to sin. I pray for you today. That no matter how cheap sin is, you will not be interested in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, now, how do we live godly in this ungodly world? What do I need to do to live the way God wants me to be? To be like God, to speak like God, and to act like God. What do I need to do? I need to pray constantly. Pray constantly. Pray constantly. And also, study God's word regularly. Study God's word regularly. Remember that song that says, Read your Bible. Pray every day. Uh huh. Pray, pray every day. Pray. Pray every day. Sing it louder. Read your Bible. Pray every day. If, if you want, want to grow. grow. Yes. What do I need to do again to live a godly life? You need to exhibit the fruits of the spirit. spirit. I'm excited because 
I know one song that explains the fruit of the Spirit. I'm sure we also do. Can we sing it out loud? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. How many are those fruit of the Spirit? Nine. Nine. They are nine in number. And God wants us to exhibit all this food. Do you think it's possible? Yes. In this changing world, you, are you sure it's yes. possible? Yes. The Lord will give us the grace to exhibit this fruit of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Then in September, the last Sunday, we learned the benefits of godly living. What do I have to gain if I live godly in this changing world? And the story was about Ezekiah. Ezekiah was just 25 years old when he started reigning in Jerusalem. And he did things that were right in God's eyes. Like David's, David, his forefather, he stood for righteousness. And he removed all the things that looked like idols in the land. He held on to God's promises and he was never distracted. You know, Auntie forget last Sunday, she emphasized that distraction. Because there are, there are lots of things that will distract us in this ungodly world. But it's like Ezekiah, we should be focused. In return, the Lord was with him and he prospered throughout his kingdom. Who wants to prosper here? I also want to prosper in my business, in your academics, in everything I lay my hands upon to do. I want to prosper. prosper. And I believe you also want to prosper. Children at home, I know you also want to prosper. Therefore, you need to avoid distraction. Stay focused and live a godly life. Good. What lessons can we learn from Hezekiah's life? Yes. yes. What lessons can we learn? Yes. I would remain focused. Remain focused. Don't be distracted. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any other lesson? Righteousness is a choice. Yes. Righteousness is a choice. Even though the world is not conforming to the laws and wishes of God, it is required of you as a child of God to live right. Make a choice. Determine that even though others are doing the wrong things, I am going to do the right thing. Praise the Lord. Yes, any other lesson from the life of Ezekiah? Any other person? Yes. We should follow the footsteps of our father. Yes, follow the footsteps of our covenant father. Ezekiah followed the footsteps of his covenant fathers. Can you mention some of our covenant fathers? Let me start from you. Yes. Isaac. Isaac Abraham. Abraham. Bishop David Oyedepo. Oh, yes. Bishop David Abioye. Bishop David Abioye. These are our covenant fathers. Have you remembered one? Yes. Isaac. Isaac. All oh, these are our covenant fathers. Let us follow their examples. They loved God and they were focused. They, they were like God, they spoke like God, and they acted like God. God. Yes, finally, let's mention some benefits of living godly in this ungodly world. Yes, benefits, benefits, quickly, of living all round rest. All round rest. Ah, I, I, I like rest, though. Does anybody love trouble here? No. They no. love rest. So, I will live godly so that I will enjoy rest. Yes, any other lesson? Supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural breakthrough. Also, divine health and vitality. vitality. This was one thing Ezekiah enjoyed. There was a time he was so sick, everybody thought he was going to die. But he prayed to God. He said, God, remember that I have lived godly. I removed all the idols. And I told people to follow you. And do you know what? God healed him. God answered his prayer. Because he was living godly. May the Lord help us to live godly in the name of Jesus. Amen. One benefit that I really love so much is that we are going to enjoy eternity with Christ. Oh, I'm really looking forward to that. Are you also looking forward to that? Yes. May the Lord count us worthy in the name of Jesus. Amen. So before we do our quiz, I want you to know that one major thing that can stop one from enjoying all these benefits is sin. sin. Is what? Sin. And I can remember that Funke emphasized, and she said that sin is a sinker. 
Sin is a what? Sin car. And it's a barrier between God and man. man. But because God loves us so much, and he desires to have a close relationship with you and her, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to come and die for our sins. Now, friends, you can become a friend of God and begin to be like him, speak like him, and act like him. We can do that. Children at home, we can do that. If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you want to be a friend to God. You want to hate what God hates and love what God loves. I want you to just say this prayer with me. Can we close our eyes and say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I thank you for coming to die for my sins. I thank you for coming to die for my sins. Today I choose to follow you. Today I choose to follow you. I forsake my sinful ways. I forsake my sinful ways. And I choose to live right. And I choose to live right. Please give me the grace to live godly. Please give me the grace to live godly. In this changing world. In this changing world. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we put hands together for God's guest that just entered into the kingdom of God? You're welcome into a new way of living. I just want you to type yes to the number showing on your screen so that we can reach out to you and give you some materials that will help you in this new way of living. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Children, are you ready for the quiz? Yes! Children at home, are you also ready? Please get your pens and your books. I will detect the questions. Please answer them and send your answers to the number showing on your screen. Remember to add your name and your age. Are you ready? Yes! Okay, number one. Explain godliness in your own words. Explain godliness in your own words. Number two. Living godly is an option for a believer, true or false. Number two. Living godly is an option for a believer, true or false. Number three. List two benefits of living godly. List two benefits of living godly. Number four. How were the Rechabites different from the others? How were the Rechabites different from the others? Number five. Mention two things that can hinder one from living godly. Mention two things that can hinder one from living godly. Number six. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of dash, dash, and dash. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of dash, dash, and dash. Number seven. List the nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. List the nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. Number eight, the last but not the least. Who is your best Bible character? And how did your best Bible character live a righteous life? Praise the Lord. Please send your answers to the number showing on your screen and we will get back to you. Please remember to write your name and your age. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have you had a wonderful time in God's presence today? Yes. Let's say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's my year of breaking limits. That is also my portion in Christ. Congratulations. Amen and amen.